Right, hello everybody, back with another short video regarding uh, this contraption, which is, that is the base plate for my Givy top box, and that was, or still is I suppose, the seat, rear seat, pillion seat for my S1000R. And what I have done is fix the base plate to the seat in order to put my top box um, for this European trip that we've got coming up. Well, not European trip, trip across Europe. Uh, that's coming up in the next few days. And I've seen some other people on YouTube do it. And I thought, all right, let me give it a shot. Um, it's the better, I suppose, or cheaper alternative, not necessarily the better. Now, I've done it. Um, would I do it again? No. Um, and this is the reason why. So firstly, I've had to notch out a little piece here out of the base plate so the key can turn. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't turn. So I had to notch that little piece out, but I suppose that's a side note. Um, now, what I found with this is firstly, the size of the seat, as you can see, is significantly smaller than the actual plate itself. So you're limited by where you can actually put the fastenings uh, to the base plate onto the seat. Um, and I was able, fortunate enough, to kind of draw through some plastic there, draw through some plastic there, reinforce it with these two steel small plates. And then similarly, this part here just came straight through the foam, but it's sitting on some plastic here uh, with the circular washer reinforced again by this square short steel plate. Um, and that corresponds with these bolts that have gone through, not really the plate itself because you've got the this gap here, this kind of vent thing. There's another one underneath it as well. So it's just kind of fed straight through. That was the easy bit. That wasn't particularly hard. It wasn't hard to draw through the seat. It wasn't hard to locate it. It was fairly straightforward. But what I found is when you have these three bolts located in this kind of uh, position, when you torque down on them, it causes the seat to bend ever so slightly. So you can see the tail end of it is lifting up. It's not flat against the, um, the, the seat or the, the, the base plate. And the consequence of that is you end up with a bit of a warped seat. Yeah. And when it's warped, what happens is that if I can position this correctly, what happens is that it no longer stays like that, but rather it's a little bit like that. So when you put these plates into the locating lugs that are under the seat and you push this down, the lock doesn't automatically locate to where the latch is under the seat. And the reason for that is because that distance from there to there is now shorter because the seat has warped a little bit. So then what you need to do is slide the seat back a little bit. So these fasteners or these brackets, they don't push firmly up against the lug. Rather, they're a little bit back from that end piece there. And what you find then is that there is a significant degree of wobble that the plate has um, once it's fixed on and you're able to lock it down into position it wobbles quite a bit and when you look at the fastening mechanism really all you've got is a piece of plastic with a couple of screws here and three allen head screws there which go into plastic and that's all that you've got and when you consider that on top of this I want to put like a 47 litre top box with all my weight and crap on there that isn't necessarily pushing down on it the way that a pillion would push down on that seat rather it's pushing and pulling as the bike's being you know uh, sped up and braking and around corners all of those forces are going to be acting on that point here just is all essentially held on with those three nuts there three allen nuts there bolts there and those two self tapping screws is that a risk that i'm willing to take on a 1500 mile 2000 mile journey to across europe the short answer is no 
Um, and there's others who have done it and they've suggested uh, putting a bracket or a, some kind of support through uh, these straps underneath the tailpiece of the bike. Um, possibly, I don't know. But I looked at it and I thought, you know what, this just doesn't sit comfortable with me. I managed to get a replacement seat for 30 quid. So, you know what, I'm not really massively out of pocket. It was a bit of an experiment. And this seat, you know, there's been a good few arses on this one because the uh, the padding's worn down, worn thin. But, you know, the long and the short of it was, is that, you know, is it advisable to do that? You know, if anybody's considering it, maybe for like a short hop, local commuting around town, it would be fine. But when I travel, you know, I've got like a week's worth of kit. I've got some tools and I've got uh, my chain and my disc lock, all of which adds up to a substantial amount of weight. Now, when you can imagine that you've got this fixed onto the seat and then on top of this, you've got a really big 47 litre top box that's got all of this kit in it, which weighs probably the better side of 20, 25 kg on top of it. And it's just being pushed and pulled and thrust forward and backwards. Is it going to be enough? Is this plate secured onto that through this flimsy piece of plastic? When I say it's flimsy, you know, I'm kind of leading you. But through this piece of plastic, uh, which is all of it is just secured by these three Allen bolts and those two self-tapping screws. Is that going to be sufficient? I'm not convinced it is. I'm not convinced at all. So I thought, you know what? Ditch it. It was an experiment, didn't work out, so I ended up buying one of them instead. <laughs> right, now, let me explain what this is. This is that the Sport Rack by Hepco Becker, or Hepco and Becker, which I managed to get off eBay for a really good price. Uh, I think I paid about £150, £155 for it. Um, but I got the Sport Rack, the extension plate, the lock was included as well. And now I've got to just... Uh, there's the little pieces that I got. Uh, the springs and the locking mechanisms. Now I've just got to figure out how I tweak it to my key. Um, and follow the instructions. And that's essentially it. So what I'm going to do with this is... I prefer hard luggage options, not soft luggage options. This is for a soft luggage option, the extension plate. So essentially you put your tail bag on there and you strap it through and hook it around and talk it up all that that's great you know fair enough people want to do that but for me um i don't really want to do that because your kit is still vulnerable at least with the top box that i've got it's got a locking mechanism and you can't get to it unless you break the lock uh, and that's just a bit of a deterrent so if we park up somewhere and we go for a coffee or an ice cream whatever it may be we don't need to worry about leaving our kit on the back of the bike in a fabric bag or a loose soft tail bag and uh, that somebody can quite easily pinch um you know the uh the uh, the, the give you mono key uh, v47 that i've got it's got a dual locking system one for the top lid and the other one for the base plate to pull it remove it uh, and once the key's out that's locked that's not going anywhere so the job now is going to be to remove this take those screws out um take this off take this plate off from my seat, locate it on the base plate here somewhere, screw it down, similar to what I've done here, um, and then figure out uh, how I'm going to adjust the locking mechanism so it fits my key. That's it, folks, for the moment. I'll be back, God willing, uh, with an update uh, once the top box is on. Okay, so that's the result. The Givy base plate bolted onto the Hepco and Becker sport rack. And underneath, that's what it looks like. These holes were already there on the sport rack. So what I had to do was, that was fairly straightforward, just feed those through, I had those plates from the time that I had the Busa. Um So I just used those and that clamps that down. I had to drill these two put lot small washers underneath there even though that plate's fairly thick it's narrow here and then thickens down so it was kind of on the edge but it should hold um and just have to map the template of this 
with a pencil onto that, take the measurements from the center point and all that, and then locate that onto the base plate, make some pilot holes and then drill through them. And it married up fairly, fairly nicely, to be honest with you. So that's strong, right? Tezzy May, strong and stable. So what's gonna happen with this now is this is gonna go on to the back of the bike. And then I'm gonna put the top rack on top and see how it fits. So that's it for the moment. We're back with the end result. Okay, so that's how it looks now on the bike. And you know what? It is pretty bloody stable. Look at that. Imagine if you just fell off. That's not going. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. That's strong, stable, sturdy. It's clipped in good here, underneath there. The base plates, solid. The Gibby rack plate mounted on solid. Really good. Really happy with that. And of course, I've got the lock from the old seat that I've put into here. So now with the, when I get off anywhere, you know, at the hotel or something, I can just use the top box key to detach the top box, take it off, and that's what's underneath. And as mentioned, those two screws drill through the plate. The holes were already there in the sport rack and I've just torqued them up nice and tight. These plates spread the load. Now, that plate, as you can see, isn't going anywhere, mate. That's solid. And the best thing about it is that the lock that's underneath here, underneath there, I'm not sure if you can see it, but those two Allen bolts feed into nylock screws on the other end that keep that tight. And there's about five of these, so you've got one there, one there, another two, and one at the top. So the whole lock, locking mechanism is on that solid thick steel plate, and it's held in by nuts, bolts, nylock nuts, which is a lot stronger than the plastic from the seat. So anybody that's looking to do this, I would strongly advise you to get one of them, unless you can fabricate one yourself. But quite often what i found is that it's worth, it's not worth a hassle, it's just worth just paying the bloody... 150 quid and save yourself all that faffing around. You might have to faff around with this to get it on and you can see there I've drawn out those holes was when I mounted it onto the booster. Uh, I used these plates when I mounted it on the K1200 that I had and now I've used those plates again and drawn a couple of extra holes to mount it onto this top uh, sport rack. Let's see how many more holes I can get in there. For the booster I use that one, that one and those two. For the rear rear rack but i'm really happy with that I'm really happy with that that's it folks i'll let you know how it goes on the trip